just a few years ago, one of my friends shared a YouTube video on my Facebook page. And that is the most particular day I started discovering the world of renewable energy. So I was just going through the video and I have seen that in Philippines, they are using two liters plastic bottle to light up the slum house households. And I became very curious that how come a plastic bottle can give light? Because it's just a water filled bottle. So the idea is you cut a circle on the rooftop, you insert one tin frame on it, and you insert the water filled bottle which reflects the sunlight inside the household and gives equivalent of a 65 watt bulb at daytime. So very often people ask me, why you need light at daytime? Because daytime we are getting everywhere light. But the main problem is millions of people in Bangladesh, in India, in Pakistan, they are living in slums and slum households are very congested. They do not have any window or passage through which the sunlight can get in. So what happens? It stays as dark as night. And most of the households, they have illegal electricity line. And we have seen that they misuse a huge amount of electricity. So after seeing the video, I became very cu curious. I went to a slum with some of my friends, talked with the community people, and we installed several bottle, bottles there. And I, and I saw that, whoa, it's working. It, it gives light. You don't need any battery. You don't need any solar panels but you are improving the efficiency of the slums. So these are some of the pictures while we were uh, working in the slums. And these are some beneficiary of, from our project. So we implemented the, the project and, in, and installed lights in 250 households. So now the students can easily study even at daytime if there is uh, uh, electricity load shedding because very often we face as electricity city load shedding. The, uh, the people from the household, they can continue their household chores and they don't need even the uh, electric bulbs. We have also installed several bottle, bottle lights in the cottage industries. So if you, you can see that we have installed in rickshaw garages. There's like thousands of rickshaw garages in slum households. People make saris, they have cottage business, so their life directly depend on this kind of activities. So these bottle lights are actually helping them to meet energy crisis when they have load shedding. They are conserving energy and doing something for the society. So here I have a very short video which uh, to share the outcomes and some feedback from the users. I hope you will like it. <laughs> খুবই সুন্দর হয়েছে আমি খুশি অবশ্যই আমার জীবনের এই প্রথম দেখলাম এই লাই আর দেখি না আমি এটা পাই অনেক খুশি সন্তুষ্ট লাগতা থাকি অনেক ধন্যবাদ দাও হল আপনাকে এই জিনিসটা করার জন্য সো ফ্রম लास्ट 2 ইয়ার্স উই হ্যাভ বিন ওয়ার্কিং डायरेक्टली উইথ দিস কাইন্ড অফ দিস প্রজেক্ট we have been in introducing this light in schools, in different communities. And one day I went to another slum just one year ago. We installed several bottle lights, and that particular slum do not have any illegal electricity line or any kind of electricity line. So the people were very happy that they are having daytime light. But when we were leaving, one guy came, and he was forcing me 2,000 taka, which is around 1,800 rupees and saying, why don't you come up with a nighttime solution, a solar lantern on something for me? I said, sir, we are just working with the bottle lights. We know how the bottle light works, but we don't know how we can come up with this kind of solution. Why don't you go and check in the local market? And he say, he's, he's saying that, no, in local market, we don't have that affordable solar home system or lantern. I said, no, there should be some. That was another milestone in our project that we started thinking of solar lanterns or nighttime solution as well. Because in off-grid areas, people do not have access to electricity. Like in, Bang in Bangladesh, almost 50 million people, they don't have any access to electricity. In India, around two, 200 million to 300 million people don't have any access to ele electricity. Not even thousands, like millions of people, they're staying at dark, 
maybe lighting up candles or kerosene, which, are, which is also very unhealthy for, for health and environment. So we did an in-depth study on the market that what are the potential uh, innovations or solar solutions we have in our market. And we have seen that we have the home systems, solar home system, which is quite expensive for the people. And we have also seen that we have some solar, foreign solar lanterns, but those solar lanterns are not working pretty good because they don't have any AutoCAD circuit in it, or the solar, solar panel is not that much big. So we have three seasons, summer, winter, rainy season. It's working pretty good at summer, but not working in winter and rainy season because it's getting lesser uh, energy. So these are the outcomes we came and we, we tried to develop some local solar lanterns. You can see we were working with solar lanterns and we came up with a solar lantern which can give seven to eight hours light backup and people can also get charged from it. We, so last year we prepared, we made 35 solar lanterns and we distributed in a uh, tribal community in Bangladesh. So before giving the lantern, they were using all the traditional kind of uh, fuels. So now, throughout one year, the students, we gave particularly to the students, they, they can study properly, they are getting more light, cleaner light. And the best thing we came to know that before giving the light, there was only seven mobile phone subscribers in that particular area. And these guys are actually working in the town, so they don't, as they don't have any electricity, they are going to the town and charging their mobile phone and coming back at home. But after giving 35 lanterns, and as they can charge, so after six months, we went there and we have seen that most of them, like all of the parents, they, have, they are subscribing to mobile phones. So lantern, light, and charging phone is not that simple. It can dramatically improve the socioeconomic development of this kind of people. So I have just uh, another very small video from that community. These are some innovation we have been working from last two years. And again, like there is a lot of linkage with all of our projects. Well, while we were working with the bottle light project, our national news media and print media, they covered the whole story a lot of time. So we were continuously getting calls from the industries. The industry owners, the managers, they were asking us, why don't you install a bottle light in my industry? So I said, yes, why not? It's a very good idea. So we visited the industry and we have seen that the height is above 30 to 35 feet. And the area is also not less than 3,000 uh, 3, square feet. So the bottle light is not going to work there. So in this digital world, we Googled that what are the solutions working in different parts of the country. And we came to know that in, in most of the developed countries, they're using skylights. It's called solar pipe light or skylight. They have a reflective pipe through which the sunlight reflects and diffuses inside the room. And you don't need electricity. You don't need uh, any kind of solar panel battery to light up in this way. So we saw the idea and said, wow, it's the bigger version of the bottle light we are working with. So why don't we try to develop with the local available materials? Because per unit cost, if we just buy it from abroad, it's quite expensive for the um, entrepreneurs in our country. So we developed the whole light with uh, local available materials. And we just recently coming here in India, we in installed the, these uh, solar pipelines in one ice cream factory. So you can see that uh, the sun-like kind of thing is actually the solar pipeline. So we have a polycarbonate dome 
that reflects the sunlight. We have a reflective uh, place there and it diffuses the sunlight inside the room. And this light of a two, 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 uh, 22 inches diameter can give equivalent of a 500 watt CFL bulb for 10 to 12 years. So you are saving 10 to 12 hours energy at daytime by improving the efficiency of the industries. Throughout working with all this innovation, we just tried to figure out that the energy crisis in the whole South Asia is crucial. So how we can manage it? What if uh, like we stop all the coal plants and every kind of electric plants and go solar? But it's not actually possible because we have to work in a very holistic way. We have to improve the efficiency in urban and in, in industrial area. As well as we have to develop different kinds of local innovations so we can easily improve the quality in rural, rural areas, off-grid areas. And the best part working with this uh, solar pipeline was every time we were going to collect some data and install lights in this ice cream factory, we got complimentary a lot of ice cream every time. So <laughs> our next plan is next time we will go and install it in some biscuit factories or any kind of food factory so we get more compliments. So as we were working with, uh, we got the opportunity working with the community with uh, the bottle light project directly and throughout the whole time we came to know, we, we just felt that what are the main challenges the local community people are facing, what are their affordability, what are the problems why still after 10 or 15 years, why still all of the people who do not have electricity don't have solar, solar systems or solar things? So eventually we came up with different kinds of solar uh, street lights because in off-grid areas they don't have electricity and the security, uh, the security of that particular area deteriorates because of proper lighting. So we came up with bamboo and bottle street lights. We came up with some more good street lights. And we also recently developed a very simple UV solar water purifier. So we use the UV light and a very simple circuit. We have plenty of sunlight. So we are just uh, purifying water and it's still under, under testing and we are continuously developing it. We also made uh, one solar shallow uh, water pump because we have seen that in our market we have deep tubal pumps, but no substitute to the uh, diesel shallow engine pump. So in Bangladesh, we have battery operated rickshaws. So those rickshaws have some DC motors. So this DC motor is widely used and can be uh, bought from any, any places and the local people can easily repair it. So we are using that particular motor to pump up the shallow pumps. So. I was just trying to figure out that the way we are working, so what, what we can say this kind of works, and I just tried to make one theory that it's the chain of stories, because all our journey is a chain of story. We started with the bottle light project. Eventually, we came to feel that there, we should do something with the night solutions as well. Then came the solar lantern. Then we came to know that the industrialists, they need some solar pipelines for the efficiency improvement. Then we just jump on it and working with it. This kind of projects came then water purifier, street light, and maybe we will end up with more different, this kind of uh, projects as well. So as I said that around 500 million people in South Asia do not have any access to electricity. And 35% of the whole South Asian population, which is around 500 million, the same. They're staying in urban area, urban slums, misusing huge air of electricity because most of the slums have illegal electricity line. So if we can develop this kind of simple solution, very simple, maybe working in some other places, we are just uh, developing it with local, locally available materials. We are just coming out with some very simple ideas which can be affordable, which, you can, which they can buy because every each and family in, our, in, in, in the whole region, they have daily expenditure. For, to buy candles, to buy kerosene oils, which is not less than 1,000 taka in Bang Bangladesh. So we have to fight. We have to come up with this innovative idea. And if more people, if all of you come together and join us, it will be more easier. We can come up in a short time with hundreds of ideas. So I strongly believe that when we are united, we can come up with a solution and we can 
Copa Vida Energy Crisis. Uh, thank you. This is all about my presentation.